In early November, Streamlit released the state of LLM apps for showcasing insights on the LLM trends of more than 20,000 apps built by the community of over 13,000 developers. And several insights were gained from this interactive report, including the top models, orchestration, vector retrievals, insights on whether chatbot functionality is the future for LLMs, and also a searchable app gallery of LLM powered apps. So I've actually created a video on the Streamlit YouTube channel providing an overview of this. And I'll provide you a brief overview also, but then I'm going to provide you a behind the scenes look at the creation of this app. So this State of LOM Apps 2023 is reporting the general emerging trends of tools and use cases in the development of LOM apps from over 21,000 and also built by 13,000 developers. And it should be noted that all of the apps and insights and analysis are based on apps deployed on the Streamlit Community Cloud. And so in this app, we're gonna have the sidebar which provides a table of content like navigation. And if you click on one of them, you could hop over to the various sections and hop back up or down as you like here. So let's have a look at the key takeaways which has been summarized accordingly here and then if you like to have a look at the respective data you could click on the buttons here at the bottom so this are the four major components of the LM apps mentioned in this report. And we have the large language models, we have the LM orchestration, we have the vector retrievals, and also the chatbot. So if you click here, you're gonna see the interactive charts. And if you modify the selection here, you're going to see the data being recalculated. So why don't I do that? Let me say, if I wanna have a look at Llama Index, and then the data will be displayed only for Llama Index. If we click here, bring Langchain back. And then what if we have a look at the percent usage? And then you're going to see that the plot here has been regenerated on the fly as we make the selections. And if you hover your mouse, you're going to see a value that are displayed on top of the lines. So all of these are applicable to all of the plots mentioned in the report. And they're interactive and they're fun to have a look at especially when you're playing around with the various functions here, and it will be regenerated. And here we have a look at the chatbots, our data future, and then you're going to see that there's a gradual decline of the simple text input, whereby user provides just a simple text prompt, like a single prompt, and then the app will generate the response for that single prompt. And then we have the chatbot functionality where users are able to interact with the chatbot app, where they provide their first question, and then the chatbot will provide the answer, and then the user will provide their second question, and then the chatbot will iterate and provide the subsequent LM generated response. And so we could see that LM chatbots trends are on the rise and the single text input are on the decline. In spite of that, the text input are approximately almost two folds higher than the chatbot functionality. And if you would like to take a deeper look into the actual apps here in the gallery, the great thing here is that all of the apps are displayed in this interactive table. You could sort them by the URL, by the app name, by the cumulative views, by the GitHub URL, by the app type. And then here you can make your selection. If you want to have a look at VB8, you want to have a look at single text input using VB8, then the interactive data frame here will be regenerated. And so it's recalculating. So here we can see that there are 46 public apps built using VB8 in the form of a signal text input. And if we have a look at the chatbot functionality and we're going to see that it is at 41 public apps and at the most popular apps the top five are displayed here in the screenshot and they are pulled dynamically from the community cloud server and this is the concerns for when building with LLMs. so you could have a look at the prior video that i've mentioned before and then the fundamental LM app architecture that the major components here are comprising of large language models, orchestration, and also the vector retrieval. About Streamlit and the methodology used for the creation of this particular report. So the report for the LM trends was mentioned earlier that it was created in pure Python using Streamlit. And we're just going to take a overview look here that the entirety of the app was created 
and they are inside the app.py and they are inside the app.py and so app.py will provide the basic functionality of the sidebar and also the various contents that are displayed here such as the text the columns that are used here however all of the graph functionality these are created using Altair the underlying data and the processing of the data are actually in the utilities function. And so instead of reusing the code, we've just packaged it up into a class and then we reuse it by importing the necessary functions from the utilities Python file here. And then we provided pretty heavy CSS customization. So we're gonna notice that the sidebar here was also created and stylized using custom CSS. Several of the layouts here, even the creation of this blue box were generated using CSS styling and also precise pixel arrangement and placement of various text elements centering the page, you know, like creating this hoverable icons of social media platforms was generated in CSS and they are in the CSS file here. And so owing to, and the images generated at the bottom of the app was stored in the static folder here, the image of the fundamental LM app architecture. And so we're in the works of deciding whether to write a blog about the creation of this particular state of LM apps and whether you'd be interested in accessing the underlying code. So drop your comments down below in the comment section and let me know if you'd like to read a blog about this, the thought process behind creating this. And also one important thing that I've learned as a part of the team creating this state of LM report was that creating a streamlit app and also creating an app that scales with a larger community user base because the app was accessed by thousands of users concurrently. And if you think of that as like a viral app, it is, right? And one of the downside of that is that when so many people are accessing the app at the same time, there might be some performance issue. The app might be a bit slower than it is if only a few users are using it casually. So then after a few hours of the launch, we've experienced that the app was a bit slow and then we refactored the code of the app. So you might see that the app looks almost exactly the same, but then the underlying processing of the data, underlying calculation of the plots that you see here and the retrieval of respective variables that are used and reused in the app was reconceptualized and also optimized so that it loads about twice faster or, or at least 70% faster than it was when it was launched. And let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to read about such a blog that shares the thought process that is involved in creating a viral app or a highly trafficked app because surely a lot has been happening in the back end in order to make an app much faster, optimizing its loading and app performance. And so I hope that you've liked this thought process on the creation of this state of LM apps 2023. And I'd love to hear from you all of your best practices, tips and tricks for creating streamlit apps. And I hope that you found this helpful and please don't forget to smash the like button, share it with your peers, stay tuned for the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to build an interactive data app and please enjoy the journey.